Welcome back, everybody, to the continuation of our Let's Play of Space Exploration, Trust Warrior 2, and AAI Vehicles. So, uh, I've been fixing up the place a bit over here. Uh, there is still some stuff we need to fix here and there. Uh, let's send you over here. This is our little fix-it bot. Uh, he will help us up, fix up everything we need. So, um, at the end of the last episode, we kind of noticed that we need to smelt more copper because we kind of use copper up quite fast. So I kind of did two things. For one, uh, I kind of upgraded the smelter over here with some productivity modules and some speed modules. This thing over here now is performing better than uh, a single one of these. These over here, they do have a crafting speed of 8, and we got 8 of them. So we've got a total crafting speed of 64 over here per lane. These over here, they run at a crafting speed of 6.4, which technically is slower. But they do have a 40% productivity increase. Um, if we calculate that on top by just adding crafting time, uh, that would mean uh, each one of these, 6.4, um, 10% of that is 0 0.64, uh, times 4, that is uh, 1.28, and then 2.48. Each one of these has technically a crafting speed of 8.84. Or maybe 8.88, I'm not quite sure. 8.8, .8. let's go with 8.8, .8 because that's definitely the correct answer. 8.8, .8, which makes them faster than these. Uh, and they also use less resources than these, though they do use more power. Um, and that's definitely something we want to set up at some point in time. But all of these over here have productivity modules in them, and we got speed modules in the beacon. That's usually your best way to set up every now and then. Every now and then, I do throw in some, some efficiency modules. Um, I kind of did the, that over here with the, um, uh, with the oxygen supply for the rocket fuel. Because I kind of noticed that these machines were going a little bit faster than we actually need. Uh, so I thought to myself, ah, you know what, just put in some, some, some efficiency modules in here and it will even out, which it does. Good! So, what are we going to be doing today? Well, today uh, we are going to be doing some ore refining. Um, but before we start off with that, let's have a quick look at our rocket over here. So the rocket over here um, is being loaded up with a whole bunch of goodies. Currently, we are loading him up with everything we need for a nuclear reactor plus some other stuff. Uh, once all of that is in, we might want to load him up with some more. But for now, let's just load him up with everything we need for the nuclear reactor. That's going to eat up, uh, tie up a whole bunch of resources for now. Um, and once that is in... We think about what else we're going to need. We're probably going to need some basic stuff like robo ports. Maybe some... Ro actually, no, no, no. We, we're not going to bring robo ports. No, 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 no. Um, well, actually, maybe a bit. Or maybe we just bring a ward. Yes. Um, I'm not quite sure yet what we're going to be bringing, but we should bring everything we need so that we can sustain ourselves on the planet. Good. Now, where are we going to do the uh, ore refining? Well, I found a, ma a magnificent spot for it. Uh, it's actually going to be over here. This whole area, we're going to make a new iPhone. We're going to make another iPhone just for ore refining. But before we do that, we do have to lay down the base parts. And let's start off with that. So, ore refining. Uh, a whole bunch of steps to do. Let's start off with a simple chemical plant. So how does one ore refine in Crestorio 2? Or in SpaceX. Well, you got here this enriched copper over here. Um, you put some copper ore in, you put some sulfuric acid in, you put some water in, and out comes enriched copper and some dirty water. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay, we have to pick up a productivity module from somewhere. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> I'll be right back because I kind of want to blueprint these straight up the right way so that we only need to blueprint uh, the, the things down and then the modules come in at some point. And yes, actually the, the enrichment process does allow for productivity modules, which makes it even better. Uh, best thing about productivity modules is um, compound interest. And if you don't know what compound interest is, oh boy, uh, it's, it's, it's underestimated quite a lot of times. Even I, to this day, still underestimate compound interest every now and then. Uh, but compound interest is basically exponential growth. And if you know exponential growth, uh, good. If you don't know exponential growth, um, think, uh, think mold. Mold grows exponentially. 
And if you ever had something go off in your kitchen and you forgot about it and you see how fast it spreads, yes. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my college days. Oh, no. Oh, no. The things I have seen. No, 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 no. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Now, um, yeah, compound interest. So if you get like, for example, uh, a 20% bonus on something uh, for free, and then you use that product where you get then another 20% bonus on top for free, it will not result into a 40% bonus on top for free. No, it will result into a 20% and then another 20 of that, uh, it will be a 42% bonus on top. And you might think, wait, that isn't really too much of a difference. 40, 42, what gives? Yeah, in, in, in only one or two steps, you will not really notice um, that extra increase too much. But if you have like multiple steps, like three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps, you will start to notice. Best best calculative example is usually the 10% the, the increase. Like you take 100, you add 10%, and you get 110 then you add another 10% and you come up to 121. Um, then another 10%, then you already add uh, 121, that's another 12, then you already add 134, 33, 134, 23. That slight, that slight increase ramps up quite fast, trust me. And if you've ever seen the episode of Futurama where Fry checks his bank account, bank account after a thousand years of compound interest, yep. Those numbers add up as well. Good. So, um, here we go. We're going to make one of these. And we are going to make this one the same way we did uh, everything else. We are going to make this in form of a diagonal station. Uh, let's make... No, wait. Let's put this one in there. Let's make a copy of you. Here we go. And let's just place it somewhere over here. And then how about the classic? An input, an input, an output, and an output. There we go. And this thing over here then probably needs to align a little bit over here. There we go. You get the station. And then let's see. Uh, one, two. We want to start over here, I guess. And then over there. Does this fit? That does fit. Uh, these buildings are, of course, smaller than the other machines we have. And uh, this uh, will also mean that we are not... Uh, well, we, I still want to put only one on each cargo wagon so that each cargo wagon gets unloaded evenly. Um, so we just have to see how we space these out. So let's maybe make this a full build real quick. Eh. Bots, help me out real quick. Collapse this forest. Thank you. And then maybe also collapse all of this over here real quick. Good. Don't really want to be standing too close to this so that this doesn't get accidentally built. Uh, that's already perfectly fine. That's enough forest clearing for me. Thank you very much. Good. Back to this one. Uh, these trees, we're going to take these personal. There we go. Chop, chop. <laughs> Uh, same for this rock. Uh, good, good, good. So, um, that will be input, and does this fit? Oh, it does. It does. Uh, oh, God, don't, 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 don't do that, please, game. Stop that. There we go. Good. And then the question is, where does this one come down? Uh, maybe here? Let's have a look. No, that that is horrible. Uh, maybe if we move this thing down by one. Ghost, please. Then uh, that's still horrible. Actually, no, I think that will be fine. Uh, because I just noticed something. Look at this. Uh, we do need this input over here. So this one can go away. And, well, we are going to be putting out less than we put in. So we can also get rid of this one. If we take these out, then it definitely looks a little bit better. And then... How about this? Yeah, that could work. That could work. So, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, 
there. Maybe one further down. Uh, doesn't really matter. It 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 really. How how is this one? This one is this one is completely wonky. Uh, that is fine. That is fine. I guess this is fine. They also kind of look like they're in a 45 degree angle, so I think this is a fine placement. That's middle over there, that's middle over there, that is bottom over there, and that is bottom over there. Yeah, this is a good alignment. Good! And then we're going to need eight of these. Now, I don't think I can do it like this, because these buildings are smaller. Um, yeah, you can already see the fourth one over there is grabbing into the void. So let's maybe move you up by two. And then you over there. Good. That is the exact same alignment as the other one. Excellent. So do it like this. Um, so you over there. And then you over there. I think that should be the correct layout. There we go. You over there. And... Oh, God. The, the autocompletion of rails is sometimes a little bit obnoxious. There we go. There we go. Good. Let's have a look. Oh, this one needs to be a little bit longer. So, hits, 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 hits. And this one over there, that goes in, that goes in. Those two go in, those two go in, and those two go in. So, we could do something like this. That's nice, that's nice. Now, we do need to put beacons in there. Um, I would. When did we get the advanced beacon again? Advanced... Beacon. There we go. There they are. Uh, we get the advanced beacon as soon as we get to energy science pack one. And that's 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 still pretty, pretty far down. Um, good. But I think... Let me just get one of these real quick. There we go. Yeah, we can't place it over here, but we can place one over here. Look at that. Sure. I'll take that. That looks nice. That looks nice. Um, do we have... Let's have another quick check, please. Um, yeah, we only have one physical output, and then only liquid in and liquid out, and then one physical input. Good, 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 good. Now, I do know that we get dirty water out here, and we can turn dirty water into copper ore and feed it back into the system. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to feed the the, uh, the the ores that we get from from, from the um, dirty water refining. I'm just going to feed that into a station, and then I'm just going to roll it like that. Uh, but this looks fine. This looks really, really fine. Uh, now, still, some things we need to do over here. Uh, we do need to figure out some of these pipes. We need a water pipe going in. We need the sulfuric acid pipe going in. I'm just going to keep you real quick over here because I do need to check this all the time. Um, and we're going to do this explicitly for copper. The iron one and the copper one have the exact same recipe. The raw, rare metal ones is slightly different. Uh, but its only difference is in what kind of acid we use and how much we use it off. But I don't think that, that we will be hitting any pipe limits over here, especially with like three sulfuric acid every now and then. Good. So each of these machines, uh, three of these machines require 25 water per second. Yeah, that's not going to be an issue whatsoever. The only thing I see that is an issue is that we can only go in via underground over here. Um... So, let's see if we can... Hmm, how do we do this? And then we also have the... The sulfuric acid pipe going over here somewhere. Uh, though for the sulfuric acid, can we do something different? Uh, I think this is fine. Maybe something like this? Um... It, it, it looks very weird and wonky, to be perfectly honest. But then again... Oh, it's... it's, it's, it's it, it does braid quite well. It, it looks super weird. <laughs> it looks extremely weird, and it's melting my mind. But it is a perfect braid. <laughs> and then, let's, let's copy this over again. 
paste it in there. Okay, this is water. Water needs to go into there. Yeah, it, it just fits. It just fits. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that any day. Um, sure. So we're going to have a, a little bit of a pipe um, braid going up here. Uh, and then we need some output over here. And you know what? We are going to do the exact same braid over here on the other side. Um... Alright, this one feels a bit different. Why does this one feel different? It feels different over here because... Um, we don't have the entry pipe over here yet. That's why it feels different. There we go. Good old squiggly pipe. Now, we will not hit any kind of pipe trooper limit. Uh, so this should be fine. <laughs> this is lovely. I like this a lot. Um, so can we... Okay, let's make, make a blueprint print real quick and then just get these curved rails out of here. There we go. So... Let's see if we can match it. Over there. Over there. And that's actually already the last one. That's all the pipes in. Oh, this is going to look so weird. I'm, I'm, I'm already in love with this. Good. So then we will have, at some place, somewhere next to this, we will have a place where we do the water recycling. Um, and then the only thing we need to do is straighten this whole thing up. So the end of this thing is over here. And I can already see that we kind of want... Okay, where's the end of you? The end of you is pretty much over there. So if we want to straighten this up, we kind of want to straighten it up like this. Oh, bad time for another save. And then not do it like this. But like this. And then we have this and this. We, we, we know this. We, we have done this one before. Uh, there we go. Elongate this a bit, elongate that a bit. And then... Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, no, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Uh, yeah, that, that's the same as we have had in the other place. We do need to put in a special swoop over here. Like, there will be, like, a track, maybe. Maybe over here, there will be a track. This track will be your track. And then... One, two, in between. Straight up. Straight up. And then... That one will be yours. And then let's just cut this a bit, cut this a bit. Elongate this a bit. Okay, let's, let's add a little bit more. There we go. There we go. And that's going to be our bracket. One thing is still missing in here. Power. Um... I mean, there's this natural nook over here. There's also a natural nook over there. Um, so let's 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 maybe keep power on one side for now, and then we do need this. That one's a little bit shorter than the other ones. Ah. Wait. No, no, no. It's perfect. It is perfect. We get this nice checkerboard over here now. And we don't need one over there. Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, and then we need some lamps. Um, lamps is really, really, really not that much of an issue. Uh, we can place these lamps wherever we please. Um, I mean... Other side of these machines under the pipe over here. Whereas this one would then be probably over here somewhere. Uh, it would be pretty much over here. And we might need some more lamps on the other side as well. Uh, 
top side over here. Then it will be nice and bright. Good. Okay. That is going to be most of the refinement done for copper. That looks lovely. Now comes the, the, the final big question. Does it stack? <laughs> Can we make it stack in a gorgeous way? So if I take another one of these and say I want to stack this thing down again. What do I need to do now? Oh, God. It's it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> uh, I mean, in the other one, we could... In the smelter, we could do this and keep it together to make it nice and compact. For this one, we do need to be a bit further apart to put it down. And then we get have that whole gap in the middle over there, and we also need to think about how we can get power across. But... This might be good, because we were kind of thinking of placing... Uh, that's a bit wonky. That's also wonky. Can't place power poles over here. Uh, okay, this one will be... Which one is this one? Um, it is... This one. And then we get this nice less... This, this really, really nice dress up over here. Uh, could work, could work. Now, I'm kind of confused where this one needs to be. Uh, ah, the, the, the whole pattern in here suddenly is, wait. Uh, technically, the best position would be over here. This is the second best position. Yeah, it has to be over there. Ah. Now, then, then the pattern is just going to be a little bit wonky. But that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that seems like the correct placement. Good. I guess I'll take this. So that's two for copper. Uh, we can do the same for iron. We can do the same for uh, rare earth uh, ore. Not rare earth ore, that's pyanodons. Uh, <laughs> rare metals. <laughs> the only thing we need to do uh, is to add some uh, signals to this whole thing. And of course, think about making a stacker. Uh, we do need a bit of a stacker over here. Um, the trains are going to be coming in over here. So the entrance will be over here. And then the exit will be over here. And I think I'll go with one row for now over here. Uh, all the way down. Um, and then we're just going to do some of the ore processing. Good. Now, we do still need to think about a couple things. One is we do need a water supply. Uh, we do also need to decontaminate um, the water. Um, we could do that here in the middle. Okay, please don't give me any green candy. Ah, give me green candy! <laughs> Hot, 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 hot. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Freaking uranium ore. <laughs> I just wanted it out of the way so we could see a little bit more over here. Um, good. Um, yeah. The, the water decontamination, that is done in a filtration plant. Um, and three of these... Well, let's have a look at the recipe. Filtration. Um, each plant over here consumes 50 dirty water, uh, 50 dirty water every second. Um, let's place one down. I actually haven't looked at this one yet. Can we actually put... Um, no, we can only put speed in there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's actually good. <laughs> so... Ooh, these are also pretty, pretty big boys. Also didn't put anything on there. That's fine. Um, sure. So three of these produce 50. If you take a look at this one, uh, each three of these produce 50, no, 25 per second. And one of these consumes 50 per second. We got eight. So that's about 50, 60, 70-ish. Uh, dirty water that we make per second. 
Two decontamination facilities in the middle over here will be fine. Um, so, you know what? Why not? Why not? Let's see what, 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 uh, where we get up with that. So you are just going to decontaminate uh, the copper water. And I kind of like this position. And I kind of like this position. Uh, yeah, that works. That works. And then the other thing that we need to do is um, the water cycle. The water cycle is strictly closed. Uh, we don't even need a big-ass water pump. That's also the reason why I can build this over here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, because we can just use a atmospheric condenser to get some uh, condensed water out of here. And use that to keep the machine rolling. Because every cycle... Uh, every cycle will do this. Um, we put 25 water in. We get 25 dirty water out. I'm not quite sure if we're going to get any extra dirty water because of the productivity modules. That's still kind of unclear. It would be nice if that would be a bit clearer. But for now, I'm going to assume I am going to get dirty water um, as part of the productivity bonus. Um, and then whenever we recycle water, we get we put like 100 in and we get 90 back. So we lose 10%, which means we only need to top this machine up every now and then. Um, and if we lose 10%, that means every iteration, uh, we only need 10% of the water. Now, if we have eight of these, eight of these consume 200 water every three seconds, uh, let's lose 10% of that. That's 180 water. No, wait, no, we need to put in 20 water every three seconds to make this machine run. We only need to put in the difference. We do need to fill it up once at least. Uh, but we only need to put in the difference. Uh, and 20 water every 3 seconds, that is like 6.666 water per second. Yeah! And 6.666 water per second, is that done in a condenser? A condenser over here makes 3.4.5 water per second. Keep in mind, crafting speed, 1.5. 4.5 water per second. Um, so we could use some, a couple of condensers, give them some speed modules, maybe put them in beacon range or something like that, and use them to keep the cycle rolling. Good. So, water. Water is over here. Uh, which means you are in the air. Closed loop. Um, how are you not aligned? Because you need to be one more over. Perfect. Water into the air, closed loop. Then, contaminated water over there. Just do a connection like this. Do a connection like this. Perfect. Uh, that keeps it spinning. Actually, <laughs> to look at this, that is a horrible idea, hooking it up like this. Um, because this will then hook up into the fluid system over there. And we need you to be in the fluid system over there. Um, so, instead of going that way, we go this way, we go that way and then we go way way good and then we do the same thing over here mm, how do we do it over here then oh this one will be a bit more complicated uh no maybe that is another water cycle over here that works and that works as well good so that is the recycling loop, but now we also need to have at least a bit of storage in here. Um, because we do need to top the system up and we do need to measure pipe contents. I'm not quite sure if... Is this possible with steel pipe? Can we put in a wire? No, we cannot. So we do need to put in some kind of tank. And I don't think there's a small inline tank. A small inline tank would be absolutely great for this. Uh, but we don't have such a thing. So, how about maybe, maybe you over there. Let's get the condenser out. You make some water. Uh, we need the condenser to be in a space where it does not interfere with the other machines. Um, okay. One, two, three, four, maybe over here. Where it does not interfere with the other machines, and we can just maybe pump it in. Put further down. How about this? Uh, and very important, yeah, this this is beacon range. We do want to beacon this. So you go into there. You go into there. Uh, we're going to put a pump over here, which will limit the condenser over here. 
Um, we're going to have to set up a similar system over here. Um, maybe, maybe the water over here goes the other way. Maybe. Maybe we go up instead of going through. Because then we can do the same thing over here. We might also just rotate this one. Ooh. That would be, now we're being fancy over here. Rotate this one. Um... You go into the air. Um, and then water pump. Oosh. Oosh. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. That, that will not work. That's, that's a dead end. Um, we can hook in water over here. Let's maybe just, just, just not hook this one in yet. I just want to see what kind of options we have available. Because this is an option. This is definitely an option. And then we can put in another water condenser, say, somewhere over here. Um, maybe over here. We, we do need the second one. I, I, I'm pretty sure we do need the second one. There we go. There we go. Uh, which means this one hooks up to the water line over there. Perfect. And then the only thing we need to do over here is hook you into the dirty water line. And sure, that could work. It's still all kind of experimental. We can put extra speed modules in the atmospheric condenser over here. Um, that's going to be fine. Now, there is also still a third option um, that... The productivity modules over here give us a positive water loop. That thing is a thing that can happen. If that does happen, um, then we would need to have some space for some flare stacks where we can burn off excess water. And you know what? I'm not even going to risk it. We're going to do that. We're going to prepare flare stacks for excess water evaporation. Uh, there we go. You can... Evaporate water in the flare stack. I've, I've tested that just before. <laughs> um, now we do have this issue over here. It would be... Hmm. Hmm. We only need one flare stack. It's connected over the other side. We only need one flare stack. One flare stack will be fine. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Because it's still the same water cycle system. Even though we have two tanks. Um, no, this is good. This is really, really good. Though we will only use this one to, to uh, flare stack our stuff. Speaking of flare stacking, we should definitely put these in. So, uh, it's going to be a very, very simple latch system. Uh, and it's not even going to be a latch. I'm just going to do the, the, the simple thing. Uh, you are going to put in water if it's less than, say, 5,000. These tanks over here, they hold, I think, 50,000? 50, 50,000, yeah. And you over there, if water in there is, like, larger than uh, 45,000, then you're going to send it. There we go. And that's the whole shebang over there. Oh, we do need to pick up you. There we go. And then we do the same thing over here. Uh, you over there. And then if water is less than 5,000, you're going to open up. And that's it. I don't, we don't need the flare stack over here. Good. Uh, how's power? Everything has power. Yes, everything has power. Uh, we still need to put some signals in. Um, but I just looked at the clock and I think we're fine. Uh, one thing was missing. Um, we do get from the water recycling over here. We do get stone and copper ore out. That's not that big of an issue. Um, I'm not quite sure where it's going to be yet. But we have more than enough space around these two machines that I can just put in some kind of belt. Either through here or there. It kind of depends on how the surrounding facility will look. I might just, I mean, it's probably going to be the same as over here. We just have like a little side facility over here. Probably a couple side facilities over here. 
where we just built off the excess. Good, good, good. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, next time you're going to watch this, um, I will already put one of these in. Uh, we're going to start over there and we're going to put it down. Uh, I do need to prepare the area over here and I do need to send over uh, the truck a couple of times. We also probably need to put some more modules into these, but for now I'm just going to run without, but we do want to run modules in these. And then we're going to be making some enriched ores over here. Uh, it's also kind of interesting to see how this part down here plays out. Uh, copying this thing down over there is also going to be a bit of a nightmare. I will figure that out on my own. Good! So, or refinement in Train to Train. And Train to Train, the, the main reason why I do Train to Train over here is just to save on UPS. Um, you need less inserters, you need less belt, you need less of everything. And we just use the train as a storage medium. Uh, I think that will be fine. Now, I'm not quite sure if that plan is going to um, take any fruition once we try to do a vanilla SPM base. But I kind of want to try this and give it like a little bit of a test and feel just to see how this one goes. So if you do like what you see, please do leave a like, a follow, a subscription. Every one of those actions does help me to grow this YouTube channel into something bloody amazing. You can also find me on twitch.tv slash boldviking where I have this absolutely magnificent Pyanodon space. Come over, take a look, see for yourself. Uh, I, I can usually be found, be found over there on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, 7 p.m. German time. Um, and without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening. Until next time!